Hey everybody, I just want to quickly catch you up to speed. We are working on a Sony BVM-1316. So far we've done some troubleshooting and we found that our issues were with a bad video board. We removed that video board and then removed all the SMD capacitors that were bad and cleaned the board. We're back working on our Sony BA3 board from a Sony BVM-1316 monitor. And what we need to do now is further clean off some of this leftover residue from those SMD capacitors. The best tool to do this is a fiberglass tipped brush. This brush has very fine fiberglass bristles on it that are safe to use on a PCB, but what it does is it's gonna scratch off that residue and some of the leftover trace uh, elements, anything on there that's stuck that's harder to get off from just a ESD plastic tip brush, we can use this brush and uh, scrape it a little bit better and hopefully clear up uh, more of that dark residue, get it out of there. Now we need to move on to cleaning the board and I'm going to be using the CRC QD electronic cleaner. This is one of my favorite canned cleaning products. It's safe to use on PCBs like this. It gets in uh, hard to reach places. It really evaporates quickly and that means that you don't have to wait a long time to actually test the board after you've cleaned it. We'll also go ahead and use a electric blower and blow the board to make sure that we don't have any leftover chemical residue. Now we need to deal with these traces that have no solder mask on them anymore. The best way to do this is use this UV curable solder mask and we're just going to take the top off here. And I like to use a pencil and push just a little bit of that liquid out on the side on my lovely little paper towel here. And then we're going to try to use our best artistic talents and I recommend using something small tipped, for example, a toothpick. Just take that toothpick, stick it in your solder mast and get a little bit out on the tip and then use that as kind of your paint brush and paint that material back onto your PCB in the areas where you don't have any mask anymore. So yeah, just give it your best Bob Ross some lovely little green trees down here on this circuit board and hopefully we will eliminate any opportunity for continuity to jump from these traces and cause interference. Now, as I said, you need a UV light to cure this solder material and I just bought this handy little flashlight to use uh, so I didn't have to go outside and try to get the sunlight to cure. I'm just going to brush this off to make sure that all that has cured up and it looks to be pretty good. Now it's not beautiful, I'm not an artist here, but I do think it looks pretty good and it's an effective repair to uh, prevent interference and 
trace shorts from happening uh, on this board. So we'll continue on and repair all the traces on this board. Anywhere that there's exposed copper, I'm going to try to cover up with this mass material and then we will cure it. Well, this is what our finished board looks like. We've got solder mass material on all these points where we had cleaned off with the fiberglass pen. It's all been cured and brushed over. You do see we have a couple points where some copper's exposed, but that's so close to the point where the surface mount cap is going to be installed that it's not going to really affect anything. The more important thing is just to get these traces, especially the longer ones, covered, cured, and protected. That way, nothing like a loose cable or you know this this board has a lot of cables going into it from the actual monitor we don't want any of those cables to brush up against these traces and cause a short we'll go ahead and clean the board one last time with our qd electronic cleaner and then after we spray it off we'll let it evaporate a little bit and then we'll hit it with that electric blower one more time All right, this is the finished board. Now we can move on to our next step of installing SMD capacitors. Ladies and gentlemen, this video is in no way a detailed tutorial on how to install SMD capacitors properly. Let's use the power of some special effects here. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna do this lovely method where I'm just gonna grab these capacitors and just throw them down at the board. And BAM! Just like that, all of them are installed. What do you think? <laughs> I know, I know. I'm sorry I shortchanged you there. I didn't show you that procedure. But hey, I got to learn how to do things too. And so I didn't want to fumble around with the camera while I tried to repair this. So maybe next time we'll come up with an SMD cap installation video. We're finally on to the most nerve-wracking and fun part. That is testing our repaired card to see if we could get any video signal out of this. I do have RGB and sync connected here to the card. It's going into the monitor. Everything's been connected properly with a Super Nintendo console. And let's just power it up and see what happens. Let's see what comes up on the screen. If anything, I do hear the tube being powered up. Let's just give it a second here. Let things get a little warmed up. We'll keep looking at our screen and there we go. That is the Super Nintendo this is a SD to SNES background pattern that is pulled up right now. Here is the pullout control module. You see we're set to RGB with external sync. The 4x3 mode, whatever you're using on here will be illuminated by an LED. And ah, what a great screen. Especially just RGB, it's something that from 1993. It is very sharp and very colorful. It's on par with, say, a 14M 4U screen, so right at around the 800 TV lines in sharpness. Well, now we can run our composite video test, and I'm just running it in here to the composite video in. 
And unfortunately, I'm still having this issue where I just can't get anything to sync. Nothing. I can't get anything besides something with external sync to sync into this monitor. The internal sync is not working. That leaves us here where we have a monitor that works great for RGB and external sync. However, I've not been able to get anything that doesn't have external sync to connect to this. So if it's something like composite video or component video, I cannot get it to sync to this. Now, I think the main issue is that we are missing these cards on here that it does say are required for the NTSC component, which is BF, and then an NTSC comb and decoding uh, card on here, which is BC and BB. None of those cards are installed here. We only have the main video card, and then we have a digital video card for SDI. So that might be the real issue here, is the fact that we don't have the right card built out to get that, and we're just lucky that we can get RGB and sync if someone does have a working one of these monitors and wants to check their build out, if it matches this one and you do get support for component video and composite video, please do let me know with a comment below. I'd really appreciate that. But for right now, that's where this one's going to stop and this series is going to end. I really appreciate you joining me on these three videos. I hope along the way we've all been able to learn something and I know I have. So thanks for joining me and just if you enjoyed it, please leave me a like and uh, let me know what you think. If you have any comments, leave them below and I will see you next time with some more retro content.